how many of you have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die what you about to go through a flamboyant pastor from Brooklyn is in big trouble with the feds accused of wire fraud and other crimes related to extortion I'm Anjanette Levy, and welcome to Sidebar here on Law and Crime. We've told you a lot about Pastor Lamore Whitehead out of Brooklyn. Uh, last summer, he was robbed at gunpoint in his church. Some people were later arrested for that. He also had a confrontation with a woman that was caught on the live stream at his church. Now the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York says that Pastor Whitehead uh, did a lot of bad things. They're saying he extorted a man and tried to convince that man to loan him half a million dollars after extorting $5,000 from him. Plus, the U.S. attorney says Whitehead took $90,000 from a retiree in his church after promising to help her buy a home. The FBI also says that, that this guy said he only had one cell phone when they executed a search warrant on his cell phone, but they say he made false statements uh, because he actually had two. Joining me to discuss this is Nick Ackerman. He is a former Watergate pr prosecutor, and also uh, he was an assistant U.S. attorney for a time in the Southern District of New York. Nick, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, Nick, what are your initial thoughts uh, when reading uh, the charges in this case and the allegations? Yeah, it strikes me as a pretty typical fraud. Um, I used to prosecute a number of these in the Southern District. Um, and what they've done is they've put together a bunch of different acts that this guy's participated in, plus this extortion, plus lying about it. Um, to me, it looks like a pretty strong case. I mean, the big issue in these types of cases is whether or not the person had the intent to defraud, that he knew what he was doing. And when you put a number of these things together, um, you come away with the impression there's no way he didn't know what he was doing. Um, clearly, it's it's all bolstered by the fact that he lied to the FBI about having a second phone. Um, and it's further bolstered by the fact that he was tampering with witnesses and, and extorting. So I, I think he's got real problems here. And let's talk, first of all, about the cell phone piece of this. Um, some people do have two cell phones. Uh, sometimes it's a work phone and a personal phone. I know that's happened to me in the past. But I've also covered a lot of cases where people have two cell phones for a reason. It's because they're doing something <laughs> they shouldn't be doing on one and then uh, using the other for other purposes. So uh, does that ever raise suspicion when, A, somebody has two cell phones and, B, they lie about it? Uh, no question about it, especially when you put the two together. Um, I mean, why, what is the purpose of having two cell phones, really? I mean, I can understand there might be some legitimate reason, um, but then why would you lie to the FBI about it? Um, and I'm sure that once they found out about the other cell phone, they probably wound up looking at it and gathering evidence off of that cell phone uh, that's going to be used against him which makes it even worse because it shows it's that much more material of a lie that he was basically trying to cover up. And that was why he lied to the FBI. I mean, he's accused of trying to get a man to loan him $500,000. He had already uh, apparently extorted, allegedly, uh, this man for $5,000. I mean, $500,000, that's, that's a lot of money to try to get someone to loan you just this isn't, we're not talking going to a bank. We're talking going to somebody and saying, hey, can you loan me $500,000? So uh, all of these witnesses, these alleged victims, I'm sure are cooperating with the feds. Oh, sure. You got a number of them, which was, is what takes away the normal defense in these kinds of cases, which, oh, I really didn't mean it. I didn't intend to defraud him. I really wanted to get a loan. But when you put all of these different incidents together, I mean, a jury's going to walk away from this and say, there's no way that this guy um, was doing anything but trying to rip off these people. And uh, the other thing that uh, caught my eye was this allegation. And he apparently had been previously sued for this, uh, for getting a, a, per, a retired church member in his church to give him $90,000. He said he was going to help her buy a home. Uh, we're talking about an elderly victim. I, I don't know her exact age, but she's an older woman. Uh, $90,000. That is a lot of money. Yeah. It was her whole entire retirement account. 
Um, and he never gave it back. And he came up with a phony excuse as to why he didn't give it back. Um, and again, you put that in the context of all of these other victims. Um, there's no question that this individual acted with an intent to defraud, namely to lie and steal from people. He has said on his Instagram account he's not guilty. His attorney uh, gave a statement to, I think, the New York Times uh, saying, you know, he he didn't do this and he's going to fight this. How do you see this case as a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York? How how does this case move forward? Um, Well, I I think what's going to happen is he's either going to go to trial and if he goes to trial, he's going to be convicted. And if he fights these charges, he's likely to get a very stiff sentence. Um, If he makes a deal, he might be able to do a bit better. Um, But either way, he is in a big pickle at this point. No question about it. I think they've got the witnesses. They've got the documents. They've got the evidence. There's really this is a case that shouldn't go to trial for that reason. You know, he's uh, still saying things online. He's he's known for doing live streams. I mean, if you're his lawyer, I'm sure you're telling the guy, be quiet, hush up, don't say a word. Oh, absolutely. But it doesn't sound like this is the type of guy who's going to hush up or be quiet. It just doesn't seem like it's in his nature. Um, and the more he talks, the more he's going to get himself in trouble here. This is, the kind of, this, is the, this is the kind of client that just gives you a total angina because you just don't know what he's going to do. Uh, most certainly. And uh, he they call him the bling bishop. Uh, so I, I think he uh, has his own little swagger and likes to kind of um, play by his own rules. So we'll obviously keep an eye on this and see what happens. Nick Ackerman, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it too. And that's it for this edition of Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. It is produced by Sam Goldberg and Logan Harris. Bobby Zoki is our YouTube manager. Kiara Bronson handles our social media, and Alyssa Fisher does our bookings. You can download and listen to Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law and Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.